the shooting range. In this episode, Pages of History, the story of two competing aces, triathlon, comparing medium-tier SPAAGs, and Metal Beasts, a French multi-role fighter. Today, we'll tell you about the French fighter-bomber Sepicat Jaguar A, with a BR of 10.0. In the early 1960s, the French Air Force needed a versatile fighter suitable for supporting ground forces, reconnaissance and pilot training programs. A new joint venture of European aviation manufacturers called Sepicat was established to design the new aircraft. This machine is propelled by two turbojet Rolls-Royce engines with afterburners. Self-sealing fuel tanks are found in the spaces between the spars and in the plane's fuselage. The fighter has two 30mm forward-facing cannons with 150 rounds of ammo each. As for suspended armament, you can choose from among bombs of various calibers, unguided rockets, and air-to-air -air guided missiles Matra R-550 Magic 1s. If you're a fan of Japanese aircraft, you have probably noticed how similar it looks to the Mitsubishi T-2. It's also very similar in how it flies. Since the Jaguar shows good speeds and maneuverability for its BR of 10.0, we recommend choosing a couple of Magic 1 air-to-air -air missiles the same as on the Mirage fighter, by the way. They can sustain up to 30 G and thus are great for destroying even actively maneuvering targets. The best tactics on this machine are frontal and boom and zoom attacks. Having an excellent armament and a hefty ammo count, you will be able to destroy your enemies fast enough quickly retreating to safety for a new attack. And thanks to high-capacity high-lift devices, the Jaguar can perform quite well in dogfights too. By the way, the machine's tail deserves a separate description. It's equipped with the so-called tailorons. Tailorons are stabilizers that combine the functions of elevators and ailerons by moving in either different or the same directions, respectively. The French and the British Jaguars are the only planes with this design in War Thunder so far. Nevertheless, don't get too excited about dogfights. The engines here don't have sufficient power to accelerate quickly enough in case of danger, and a low-speed jet is an easy target for any fighter. Mixed battles are where the Jaguar performs best. A great choice of rockets and bombs, as well as ballistic computer, make this aircraft a fearsome strike fighter. When you choose your suspended armament, we recommend taking eight 400 kg bombs. That will enable you to destroy both single and clustered targets. For a jet attack aircraft, attack speed is the most important thing since you'd want to spend as little time as possible in the aiming sights of anti-aircraft vehicles. If you expect to meet enemy aircraft, replace a couple of bombs with two air-to-air -air missiles. That will increase your chances in a possible air fight. Early on in 1945, no one in their right mind would say that Japan had any chances left. Any fighter they had was met with a whole American squadron. Any bomber met with an entire regiment. The giant B-29s were coming in endless waves over the Japanese cities, dropping thousands of incendiary bombs from unreachable altitudes. Codesigns, Foxtrot, Uniform, Tango were broadcast openly. The last pockets of resistance in the Philippines were slowly being suppressed 
and the U.S. Navy was getting ready to invade Okinawa. It was the time of glory for the American fighter pilots. They regularly hunted down those rare Japanese aircraft that risked flying out. The pilots saw this as a competition, a game. It wasn't a formal game and had no rules, which made it all the more dangerous. To fellow pilots, two best aces in the U.S. Air Force, Richard Ira Bong and Thomas McGuire, joined the competition, a race for the number of downed planes. Perhaps these outstandingly courageous pilots wouldn't have admitted they were hunting for glory, but everyone knew that the U.S. Top Flying Ace is a title you receive once and for many years. And Bong was leading. He had 40 air victories, a personalized fighter, and even an invitation to leave the front lines to have a tour around the U.S. for some interviews with journalists. Maguire, however, was getting very close with his 38 victories, and while Bong was smiling to journalists and promoting war bonds, Maguire could very well beat his record and become the new ace number one. We'll never know what Major Maguire was contemplating when he flew out in his P-38 Lightning together with three other pilots. Was he hoping to finally get the two missing victories? or just doing his job, we don't know. What we do know is that when the American fighters were suddenly attacked by a single Key 43, the ace went into a fierce attack alone, trying to catch the agile Japanese fighter. And that became his undoing, since the Oscar was piloted by Akira Sugimoto himself, the famous Japanese ace and a master of dogfights. In his hands, even the outdated Key 43 was a deadly weapon. As soon as the Lightning's large caliber rounds hit the Hayabusa's frame, the Japanese ace made a perfect sharp turn and went under Maguire's diving fighter. Maguire desperately wanted to finish off the damaged Japanese aircraft, so he decided to chase it instead of gaining altitude for a second attack. Chasing an extremely maneuverable Hayabusa? <laughs> On a heavy lightning? While diving from a low altitude? That was more than a blunder. It was an actual fatal mistake. The twin-engine American plane was filled to the brim with fuel, so it went into a spin dive and crashed so quickly that Maguire didn't even have the time to open the cockpit canopy. Soon after that, the damaged Key 43 crashed into the jungle as well, where Officer Sugimoto was captured by the Philippine guerrillas within just a few minutes. But that wasn't the end of the battle. As soon as the dogfight began, another Japanese pilot, Sergeant Mizunori Fukuda, rushed to his new Key 84 and took off to help. By the time he got to the place, it was already over. Maguire's P-38 was burning on the ground, and the three remaining lightnings were circling in the skies, still hoping for a miracle that would keep their commander alive. Without hesitation, Fukuda attacked the closest lightning, piloted by Major Jack Ridmeyer. However, when the latter spotted the attacking Japanese fighter, he didn't even think of dodging it. Instead, facing it head-on, facing the four powerful cannons of the Hayati plane, or Frank, as the Americans called it. Why? We'll never know either. Maybe it was blind rage, revenge for the death of his commander, or maybe he just misidentified it. Here's the Key 84, with its recognizable flat leading edge, as well as the smooth profile, tear-shaped cockpit canopy, extendable flaps, and a radial engine. So, it's so easy to confuse it with the widespread Key 43 from a distance. And that one only had two machine guns on board. Anyway, both fighters opened fire simultaneously, both caught fire, and crashed into the jungle. The war took the lives of two more flying aces. Thinking about it now, we can say that one of them 
had no reason to enter a battle with such heavy odds, while the other didn't have to face such a risk. But war is a huge melting pot of usually incompatible and nonsensical things. Forward planning and primordial instincts, outstanding mastery and extreme recklessness, honor and valor, or blind vanity. Meanwhile, it was only six months until Japan would surrender. A couple of weeks ago, you suggested that we have another triathlon among SBAHEs, only mid-tier this time. Well, here we go. Please welcome the contestants. The American M19, the German, no, not the Wirbelwind, since it outclasses all others here. Let's take something more fair, something like the Ostwind 1. The Soviet ZSU-37, the British Crusader AA Mark I-D, the Chinese ZSD-63, the Italian R3-T20, the French AMX-13 DCA-40, and the Swedish contestant... <laughs> Wait, I need more air in my lungs. <sighs> Luftwerns Kernenwagen-42. This first test, as usual, will check who's the fastest. The contestants will have to race across a track full of snow, sand, and marsh. Let's go! All the machines dart off. The Italian crew gains the lead right away, with the American, British, Chinese, and French crews closely behind. Others, <laughs> well, lag a little. When it comes to snow, the R3 T20's wheelbase shows worse performance, and the British and French crews start catching up. The Swedish and the American machines are close, while others only fall even more behind. No change seen in the desert. But marshes pose an even bigger challenge for the wheeled Italian machine, so it loses the leadership. Now the British and the French crews are in the lead. <laughs> Not for long, though. As soon as it gets to asphalt again, the R3 darts ahead and finishes first, leaving everyone else far behind. The AMX comes second, while the Crusader finishes third. The second lag of the trial will check how well the contestants do their main job, destroying enemy aircraft. For targets, we've picked two planes imitating attacks from opposite directions. Let's go! The crews aim their weapons and open fire. Thanks to a high rate of fire, the Italian and the Chinese crews hit the target first. But they need some extra time to actually destroy it. Next are the Swedes, the French, the Americans and the Germans. And now they need to rotate their turrets 180 degrees to repel the next attack. The Swedish SPAAG is the first to do that, and by shooting the plane down right away, it completes the task. The next ones to report, mission accomplished, are the Italian and the Chinese crews. The third place goes to the M19 and the Ostwind. Finally, the last trial will see how well the SPAAGs can handle tanks. For the target, we chose the Panther, a German medium tank showing its side from a kilometer away. Let's check which SPAAG can destroy it at such a distance. Let's go! Dozens of rounds start flying toward the Panther. The Soviet, the Swedish and French crews penetrate the target right away, but due to a lower fire rate, the ZSU-37 needs a little more time than the others. The American and the British crews have to move closer, only managing to penetrate the armor at 700 meters. At 500 meters, the Chinese crew has also managed to hit it successfully, 
Others, well, they had to move even closer. So let's sum up. The Swedish Luftwerns Cannonwagen 42 gets the third place thanks to its quick gun, good anti-tank capabilities and best turret rotation speed. The Italian R3T20 armored car gets second place for its outstanding speed and a great gun. And finally, this triathlon's winner is, ta-da, the French AMX-13 DCA-40. This is the most versatile machine, capable of moving around the map quickly and handling both air and ground targets. Ah, well, now that we've found the best mid-tier SBAAG, it's time to answer some of your questions. The first question was sent by a player called Darth Holden 41181. What is the device on the back of the TA-80 used turret used for? Hi there. This device is called a snorkel and it helps a tank to cross shallow water bodies like rivers or lakes by going across the bottom. By the way, it's no accident that the T-80 used snorkel is off-center. This is the only turret position that allows the driver to evacuate through the autoloader and out of the machine. Mohammed Jafar asked, Why is the graphics movie not recommended for gameplay? Hello, Mohammed. The movie settings require very beefy hardware to run smoothly, so it's best to only use it for capturing screenshots or videos. And when you're in battle, the FPS and your reaction matter a lot more. So balanced or medium settings here might be better. Of course, if you do have one of the latest GPUs and it's good enough to comfortably play at movie settings, <laughs> then why not? Philip Brokolica writes, Why can't I take my PE-8 as my first aircraft in SB? Hi, Philip. Air simulator battles divide into six brackets defined by BR. The PE-8 for instance, with its BR of 5.3, can be played on Tier 4, where the BR is limited between 5 and 6.3. However, for your first spawn, you can only choose an aircraft with a BR lower or equal to the minimum allowed number. If you want to choose a machine with a higher BR, you need to earn some more spawn points first. And the last comment for today was written by Adam Zolkowski. What is the latest strategy to play with P47 D25 or D28? Hi Adam. By all means, the P47's calling card is its armament. It can carry nearly 4,000 pounds of bombs or rockets. Simply amazing for a single-engine piston aircraft. On top of that, the P47 has the whole eight Browning machine guns. With that on board, the Thunderbolt is a great strike fighter for mixed battles. The tactics are fairly simple. See a tank? Drop some bombs on it or launch some rockets. See an enemy aircraft? Send it back to the hangar screen with your eight heavy MGs. And once again, guys, that's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment. And the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to leave a like. Watch the skies. Stay safe. Wash your hands and, well, you know the drill. Also, your orders are share your thoughts and comments and uh, we'll see you next week.